own any kind of business, big or small, you wanna make sure you are staying on top of your taxes and your record keeping. So come tax time, you are prepared, you're getting all the deductions that you can and you're not stressing. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing how I, as a daycare provider in my home, as well as an online entrepreneur, stay on top of my taxes and record keeping. I'm gonna be giving tips that work for you across the board, no matter what kind of entrepreneur you are, big or small. And I also have something I'm launching for daycare providers within this video. So so make sure you stay tuned. My very first tip is to make sure you have some kind of system in place in your home or at your workplace that you keep track of all your paperwork and all of your receipts. You need some place to dump all of that until you are ready to deal with it. For me personally, I use the Freedom Filer system. I will link to it below, but it's a really awesome system for filing. It's very foolproof. If you're not a very organized type A person, this still works great for you. It's actually probably even better for you because it's very self-explanatory and it's done for you. So I just have a folder for each month for that year. And when I have receipts or paperwork, I just stick it in whatever month it goes goes along with until I'm ready to deal with it and it works really well for me. My second tip is to plan a date that you can be consistent about every single month or at the very least every single quarter that you are going to deal with all of your receipts, your paperwork and that kind of thing and enter them into whatever program you use. For me, in the past, I have done it monthly. Moving forward, I'm going to be doing it quarterly. As a daycare provider, I have decided this year to actually take a day off unpaid four times this year on a Wednesday, like the first Wednesday of the quarter, I guess you could say. And that's when I'm gonna be dealing with the last three months receipts, paperwork, education expenses, training, all of that. That's when I'm gonna be inputting it all, going back through and seeing you know, what stuff I can deduct, mileage, and all of that on that day. For you, it may be once a month, the last Friday of every month, the first Monday of every month, the second Wednesday of every month, it doesn't really matter. And you may not need a whole day for it, but just a couple hours. If you're a daycare provider, maybe you do it during nap a certain day of the month or the quarter. What I used to do was nap time on our pajama movie days we do once a month. That's when I would tackle it, but I just found that I wasn't actually doing it. So by me taking an unpaid day, it's motivating me to actually do it because I'm not getting paid that day. So I better well use that day wisely to get my paperwork done. So whatever date you choose, make sure you can stick to it, make sure you're consistent, write it in your calendar and stick with it. The more you can do over time, the less you have to do at tax time next year and the more you can enjoy your Christmas holiday, your New Year holiday, Valentine's Day, Easter, because you're not worrying about taxes. Tip number three is to have a checklist that you use. So when you actually get to the day where you're going to sit down and tackle all of this stuff, you want a checklist that makes it easy. The biggest tip I want you to take from this is make it easy on yourself. So if you have a checklist that takes all the thinking out of it, you just go down the checklist, check it off, it's motivating, and then you're done and it's wonderful. So just take a few minutes to actually make a checklist. On my checklist, I have a few different things. I make sure I go through my receipts. I make sure I enter my receipts. I enter my mileage. I go through my emails and look up any orders that I made and see if I can deduct those. I go through my Amazon and make sure I you know, deduct anything I bought on there in the last few months. I look at my utilities and write off those as well. I look over my budget and see if there's anything I missed. And then I also make sure to file any paperwork that I just kind of throw into this little caddy in my next to my desk and I file that in our file cabinet. And it's also a great time to reorganize your desk and your office area, your office supplies, make a note of anything you need to buy because you're already like in the mood to tackle things. It's just a great time to just throw that on your list so you're getting that done as well. Tip number four is to have an awesome program, worksheet, workbook, system for actually keeping track of all of your records and your expenses. So you want some place to put all of your mileage, all of your deductions. Personally, as a daycare provider, I wanted something that was really easy to use, and so I actually created my own system. Now, if you're in a different business, you know, this may not work for you, but if you are a daycare provider watching, I just really wanted to briefly talk about this because I made this specifically for daycare providers in your home because we can deduct so many things. We are very unique in that we can deduct so many things that we buy for business use and there's other things that we have to keep track of like our hours, our time space percentage, 
our meals that we served, and so on and so forth. So I spent many, many hours and days working on and creating an Excel workbook that is amazing for providers. It's very simple and easy to use. I used it for my taxes this year and it worked flawlessly and it's just so amazing. There's a spreadsheet for every month so that you can enter your expenses and categories that go along with daycare for your Schedule C. There's a place to keep track of two months worth of hours so that you can figure out what your time space percentage will be. There's a place to actually figure out your time space percentage. There's a place to log your meals, a place for your utilities, and then a place at the end where it adds it all up, multiplies it by your time space. And it's just super simple and easy and affordable. So if you are interested in this, I'm just launching it along with this video. So you can look in the description for more information, but I just really hope this can bless so many different childcare providers out there. Now, when you have all that stuff in place and you are actually sitting down to look at your receipts, it's really important to categorize them to maximize your time. You kind of want to do it assembly line style. So I like to categorize mine as I'm going through that month's or that quarter's receipts. I like to sort them into piles based on personal receipts that are just things that I bought for personal use, things that I'm just deducting the mileage on. For me, that's like trips to the grocery store where I am not deducting those food costs because I use the standard meal rate allowance, but I can still deduct the mileage on that. So I put those in a pile and then all my other receipts that have, you know, sometimes space deductions, some hundred percent, I put those in a pile. So I know all the personal ones, I'm just going to write P on and put those away because I don't need to deduct anything. All of my mileage, I'm gonna write M on, so I know to add you know, just the mileage for those. And then the rest of them, I'm gonna go through more detailed and actually write out like what I purchased, how much I can deduct on each one. So next, you're going to add up your receipts. So for those ones left that in the last pile, you're going to go through and you know, see which ones you conduct as 100% business for daycare, which ones you can do for time space. And if you're another kind of entrepreneur, you might have business use expenses that you can deduct. It really depends on what type of entrepreneur you are, the nature of your business. But as a daycare provider, I go through and just, let's say I'm shopping at Target. You know, if I bought paper towels, I'll mark that. I can do that for time space. If I bought some toys that are specifically for daycare, I'll mark that as 100%. And then I add up all the 100% ones and all the time space percent ones. And then I put the totals at the top. So I know when I get to my spreadsheet, what numbers to plug in. And it's really, really simple. Okay, so that's about it for the actual monthly what you need to do and tips for what to do on a monthly or quarterly basis. But another thing you wanna make sure you are doing is setting aside money for taxes. When I was a nanny quite a few years ago now, I didn't do this and I got screwed over. I screwed myself over and I owed the IRS money and I would never recommend anyone do that. It's awful, it's such a scary feeling owing the government money and I never want any of you guys to be in that boat. So make sure you're setting aside money. Now, how much really just depends on your situation, how many dependents you have, the nature of your business, how much profit, if you're married, if you're not, you know, there's so many things that go into it. So you definitely want to be contacting a good accountant about this. But if you're brand new to a business, you know, in general, I would say save at least 20% even more if it's like a very risky business and you just aren't sure. But for me, I save about 20%, sometimes even less, depending on the year. Now that we have two daughters, we can write off more. Um, you know, we get more deductions for having two dependents versus one. And so our tax repair came up with a lower number now that we save. But it's good to always have extra just so you don't have anything else you have to pay come tax time. And you wanna pay those quarterly. Piggybacking off of that, you definitely want to make sure you have a really awesome tax repair. You want somebody who is going to get you as many deductions as possible, who's going to be really good at answering questions, who knows your business. For me personally, I wanted a tax preparer who was knowledgeable about daycare because there are so many tax laws and so many details that go into a daycare business that's so different than any other type of business because we are operating out of our home. We're using a lot of the same things for business and personal use. And I wanted someone who was knowledgeable about that because I don't wanna be audited and I wanna be able to deduct as much as legally possible. Who doesn't? We don't wanna pay the government if we don't have to. So I would really highly recommend you find somebody 
don't just look for the cheapest person because you're end up probably going to end up spending more money in the long run. You want somebody who's knowledgeable, interview them, see what experience they have with a business similar to your own and try it out and see how you like it for that year and you can always switch. And lastly, another way to get motivated because so many of us entrepreneurs love creating, love the business creation process, love helping people, solving problems, but a lot of us hate the actual paperwork part of it. So do something while or after you have been working on this to reward yourself. For me personally, I like to play a movie while I'm doing all of this quarterly or monthly so that I feel like it's kind of a treat to myself. And am I really paying attention to the movie? No, but it just makes me feel better. I also like to drink my coffee along with it. You could definitely have an alcoholic beverage if that's more your style and you don't have little kids around while you're doing this. Or you could treat yourself to a pedicure or manicure or just like a date night with your spouse after. Try to do something to reward yourself to get yourself to actually do this because so many of us hate doing it, put it off, and that's probably why you're watching this video. So make sure you do something to treat yourself while you're doing it and or afterwards. I hope this video was helpful for you. Let me know any other tips you guys have for fellow entrepreneurs out there. It can be really hard. This can be such a stressful time of year and I really, really wanna help you guys to avoid that next year and stay on top of it moving forward. It's not too late. We're only a couple months into the year. You can definitely start a new system right now, catch up, and then keep going moving forward. If you want to know more about my expense workbook, make sure you click the link in the description. I'm so excited to share this with you guys. I poured my heart and soul into this, and I really want it to bless so many other providers out there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.